Hi guys, welcome to MS Power Automate. In today's video, I will be sharing some tips and tricks of using Microsoft Power Automate. Number 1. Declare a data table data type. If you search for a data table, there are no ways for you to create a data table data type. You can do so by using a set variable. First, I will declare a table name followed by a percentage, curly brace, and a circumflex. This is to tell you that we are creating a column name. We have successfully created a data table data type. Number 2. Add a new data row. To add a new data row, you can do so by using a set variable too. We use the table name and set it as table plus the value of the column name. In this case, I would like to add a earphone, NA and a $20 USD. We have created a earphone and a price of $20 USD. Number 3. Retrieve a specific item of a data table. You can do so by using a set variable. First, I will declare the variable name that I want to produce. And I declare it as a table with an open square bracket. This value will be the row index. A table starts with zero. In this case, I want to get the first item price and I need to declare the column name. Number four, we assign a value of existing table row within for each loop. Assuming I have a multiple products here. I want to replace the value of a microphone to 5 USD dollars. First, I will use a set variable and I name it as loop index or you can use it as a row index. And I start it with zero. Now I'll use for each loop. For each item in table, I'll decide a if condition. If product name contains microphone, then I will set the value of the T table of the microphone. So in this case, I will set variable and then I will re-manipulate the value over here by putting table, open square bracket, this will be the root index. And I will declare the column name. I will set the value as
now you may also need to use the increase variable here to keep increasing the row index you have successfully updated the microphone price Number five, declare a dictionary data type. In Power Automate, they don't call it as dictionary. They are using it as a custom object data type. First, you will need to declare a custom object. You can do this by using a set variable. Then, well, a percentage, two times of open curly brace, and another two times of closed curly brace. Next, to set a key and a value, you will use a set variable, and then you will need to indicate percentage, followed by new custom object open bracket and you will need to set the property name which is known as the key in this case let me put it as example as name and i will set the value here as 5 You successfully created a dictionary data type with the name and a value. Number six, downloading files from web. I would like to download a file from this web. Normally, how we will do is we will use a click, but you can do so by using a Another action called Download from Web. Over here, you will need to indicate the URL. Right click, copy link address, and indicate the URL here. And you will use a get method, followed by indicating the full original path. Over here, I would like to indicate the path as. You have downloaded the file successfully. Number seven, get file part path. Assuming we have a file path of document file and you want to get the root directory or the subfolder in this case instead of we use a get subtext what you can use get file path part and you indicate the file path You'll be able to get the file name, the file extension, and also the root path. Number eight, clear temp with DOS command. You can clear local temp file 
by using this command in the command prompt. However, Power Automate does not allow a percentage because it detects it as a percentage, as a variable data type. In this case, I will get an error. To do so, what I can do is, I add a apostrophe, followed by a percentage, another apostrophe, and I add it off with another percentage. Do so for the other side. I click run. I've deleted all the rest of the local temp file. If you see this, basically it's being used with other process. You can verify it under common prompt. Number 9. Export your flows as text. Instead of you exporting the flow from the web portal, you can do so by copying this set of actions. Assuming we have a chunk of text and actions, you can copy this and open a notepad. And paste this. Save it somewhere else. Number 10, view desktop flow logs. If you navigate to the web portal under monitor, go to desktop flow runs. There will be a list of desktop flows that you have run successfully. Over here, it will only be recorded if you run a flow from this page. In this case, to show you an example, I click on this option. It, in, it indicates the list of runs. And I can take a look inside. It will show me at which stage I got a field status. So if you are keen to learn more, do remember to subscribe our channel as we have constant updates and tutorial videos on Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. Thank you.